thank you for staying with us. It's still AM 120. And yes, we've been talking about political development in previous days. We had Honorable Larry Agbonu talk to us, you know, from the legal perspective. And right now we have a political analyst, Mr. Adesumbo Badechoko. You're welcome this morning. Good morning. Thank you for joining us. Let's have your view on the court's judgment on River State application. I think the lawyer has done. We want to have your own view. I don't like dwelling on legal matters because uh, it's so funny in Nigeria that you hear these judgments, the same judgment that court has pronounced in their own wisdom, lawyers still contest. Some will say it's wrong, some will say it's right. Everyone will try to justify their own side. So those of us who are outside of the legal profession will look at it, okay? We want to dwell on the morality or the political sense or undertone that uh, the judgment might have. They're talking about precedence that, well, several years ago in Lagos, there was ruling, which was not obeyed by the courts, uh, by the powers that be then. So I wouldn't know. This one now is saying something else, giving them the powers to. Then the federal government just decided on their own, and the state went to court. Now, the federal government is being asked by the courts not to release funds. You know, there are two different things. So, whether or not the federal government will decide not to obey the court again by releasing funds, or obeying the court by not releasing funds, is up to the federal government to decide. So that's the thing. That's why I said when it comes to legal matter. Uh, there's been, there's been um, reaction. You know, on the development, and you know, people talking, saying, okay, there's a legal, I mean, political undertone. You know, whether BK or Tinubu, you know, is be, was behind the judgment. What would you have to say about that? That is what people will say because um, if we go back to the genesis of this whole problem, it started with argument or misunderstanding between two individuals, the incumbent governors in Fubara and his immediate predecessor, who is now the minister for FCT. And of course, both of them are stakeholders in River State. And of course, that crisis was at a latent stage. But because they are you no know, uh, powerful individual, the governor being the governor, and we know who governors are in Nigeria, and of course, uh, the former governor too, and the minister now, uh, who had been a governor, understand uh, the powers governors wield, and of course maybe trying to prevent certain things. You know, they began the struggle, and they have their lawyer followers. At the beginning of the crisis, the minister you know, controls the hammery. But along the line, the people now started taking sides, you know, the governor was now getting more and more uh, belligerent of his own, and he's now, I think he has enough forces to, tell, to fight. That's why he's fighting now. At a point, the party did not wait in on time. Uh, Rivers stakeholders did not wait in on time. Uh, they asked the federal government or the president to do a deed. His uh, position or his uh, recommendation was seen to be tweeted in a way against the governor. And of course, the governor, having agreed in secret, came out in public to say, you know, he's not uh, going to agree again. Because you know that some people are you know, fanning the embers underneath. And that is why the crisis has refused to uh, simmer. It's still getting more and more heated <laughs> up. Now, now, we know that uh, in most cases, when crises like this happen, of course, the people of the states would be the ones to bear the brunt. But what do we think would be the um, eventual case or repercussion based on this judgment, the issue of the power struggle in the state? How will it impact? What impact will it have on the people of the state? The only thing is that uh, they would be denied benefit or dividend of good governance, uh, if there's anything like that in Nigeria for now. But they will not enjoy uh, governance, because 
when we say governance in Nigeria, it's all about funding, and fund is now being tampered with, because the governor will have an excuse not to do anything. But the question we should ask is, when the funds were coming, what has he done with the funds? He was fighting. <laughs> you understand? So these are things that uh, we need to look at. In all of this, it's all about, about personal interest. It's not that the governor is so uh, in love with the people and is fighting for them. No, he's not. Let's, let's look at this impact now. You have, we have spoken about uh, the grass, you know, when elephants are fighting, the grass Definitely. have been trampled on. But let's talk about Nigeria. You know how key River State is to Nigeria economically and politically. Um, how, how much of an impact are we going to be seeing? Because we already seen a lot of people talking about it at federal level. And of course, you know, River State producing what we, you know, talk about the most as a country. How much of an impact will it be on the country as a whole? Let me clear some misconceptions that is out there, because uh, there's one fake news that flew around on social media yesterday regarding Nigeria's uh, rating dropping from 4 to like 20 something. I look at it, we were not even 4 initially. So why would we now drop? What, what ranking is that? Let's, let's make it clear. Because I don't know how production okay. ranking. I know, and I said, this is fake. No, I got it from a platform that's uh, hardly or seldom circulate fake. Even though they were also putting that question mark, could this be true? I look at it, even from <laughs> the caption, I know this cannot be true. Yeah. Now, Rivers does not have the most oil well for now. Uh, at some point, there have been some boundary adjustments, reallocation, and uh, I think Governor Amechi challenged those things then or commented about it when some oil wells were moved from rivers to Aquaibom. So Aquaibom is holding that position now. And when you have Aquaibom, you have Delta, you have Bayelsa, you understand? Uh, the rivers alone cannot bully the whole country. Let's just put it the way it is. You understand? So that's one thing. But of course, having been, uh, having, uh, having cap uh, the Potakota, Potakota as its capital, and that is where most of these IOCs have chosen as their operational base. You understand? So, by virtue of that, a good number of the IGR that rivers generate comes from there because their headquarters are in Port Harcourt. And that's why uh, people are giving that uh, river. Because when Port Harcourt is boiling, the IOC will have to either shut down operation at the headquarters or find a way to now start operating remotely. So in a way, it's still going to be affecting their uh, operations. So that's where it's a cause of concern for the federal government. But in terms of you know, real oil exploration, we have other states where we get the oils from. Uh, which, But the most important thing is for the crisis to uh, be weighted in and look for a political solution because that is is political in nature. When so you, you cannot go and use another method to solve it. Now, uh, please uh, give us something more on that political solution because I, I like the way you coined the word. I like how you have driven an angle to it and I think people would want to see the clarity on that. Yeah, it is a political problem because what caused the problem was politics. Politics of who controls the resources of the state. You understand? You know, a scholar wants divine politics as uh, the science of who gets what, <laughs> when and how. <laughs> when you say that, that is, you determine who, who you empower or who controls the state resources. Now, going back to the genesis of the whole problem, when the former governor was to serve out his tenure, of course, there's this succession crisis which uh, came up. There are some individuals who felt that they have the capacity to succeed him. And those ones haven't been uh, big weeks in their own uh, rights, were kind of uh, you know, persuaded or uh, outsmarted by the then governor, which is the minister now. And he decided to support using the machinery that he controls then to bring up Sinfubara. Some of them tried to, you know, use the AFCC to kind of get him disqualified and all of that. But he shielded him. So he protected him. And even when he too thought he could get uh, a slot at the federal or be on the ballot for the PDP then, and he failed out, he aligned with some other governors, they formed the G5. 
Now, those who had been against his nomination of Fubara decided that, well, we will not go with you. You can't have your way at the states and also have your way at the federal level. So they decided not to go with him in the support of the presidential candidate he wishes to. So they said they are going to support the candidate of their own party, which is the PDP. So there was division at that level. And of course, you know, the presidential election came first. So I haven't had his way. And he declared that, well, at the state level, part of what he agreed with is that PDP states, is, Arrivas is PDP state, and he would work for his party at the state level. And he did. So they came together and then they produced the governor. But that field was still there. And immediately, those, when uh, the governor emerged at his inauguration, they gave his advice, and he says so many things which are, people are not trying to use against him anyway. So, allow the governor to govern. That is what others have been telling him. And in fairness, since he became the minister, he, the WK we knew, or we knew, doesn't like leaving River State even for a day. But since he became the minister, he was away. He only visits. And when they have state function, they invite him, he comes down before matters, which has to do with who controls the resources of River State now begin to come. But they will not tell you that is the reason why they are fighting. Prior to that election, the governor then, or Wiki as a governor, recruited about 200,000 hates, which he calls structure, meant for rigging or whatever. But they have to be paid. And you know this is a state that has issues with cultism, and those cult guys are being harmed and sponsored by politicians. Of course, they control a sizable number of them. And those are the foot soldiers that they deploy. And those are the ones that you've been seeing causing mayhem here and there <laughs> all over River State because they are answering their paymasters. And he has a good number of them to his side. Then you have the political bigwigs who will always appear in public. And you have some neutral party who do not belong to the PDP. They just want good governance in the states. But for now, they are in position. These are the people rallying around the governor that come. You are the governor now. We will not allow somebody who nobody disturbed when he was governor to now be disturbing you as governor. So all these things are how the problem started. And the stakeholders were supposed to like let the governor know that come. In party politics, it is just that in this fourth republic that the whole thing has been bastardized. In the first republic, second republic, party was supreme. Once you are elected, you face your governance. And when the party needs your attention, they invite you. But what do we have now? The governors wanting to run the party and also run the government at the same time which is an aberration. And that is where the party no longer has a say because when it comes to party sponsorship, the governors as candidates would have pumped a lot of money in there and sponsored the party. And in the case of this particular governor, he did not do much when it comes to sponsoring because he had someone who was at the hands of affair backing him up. There's no way we could have outspent the likes of us in Opara and the people that are supporting him then. Okay. But he had that uh, challenge. But unfortunately, because those ones now have scores to settle with the minister, they rally, they are now using the governor to really fight him because they know he's the governor, he has the, the, the might now to really do certain things or take certain decisions. So that's how the problem has been. And until those people decide to now say, okay, let's give peace a chance, let's appease to the governor, let's reconcile this thing. That is where uh, the solution would uh, be, be, be achieved. Because if they refuse to shield their sword, we we'll still continue. And 2027 is around the corner. We may say it's far away, but all these things has 2027 as undertone. Okay, let's look at the issue of um, uh, judiciary and the cases, cases of the campaign. Now, Honorable Aguru talked about how the judiciary, the court, should not have given such judgment in the first case, considering the fact that most of them had decamped. You know,
you know, you were ele elected under a particular political party and you decamped to another while still, you know, in that same government. And there were just four of them left. What do you think, you know, sh do you think our uh, judiciary should also do better? Because, I mean, this is, this is also bearing the case of um, having a political undertone regarding the judgment. Do you think our judiciary should do better? You know, considering the fact that these clauses are also there, they were elected under a particular political party and they were no longer there. It was only the four of them left that were there to make the decision. Do you think the judiciary should do better in that regard? Uh, of course, uh, and it's because the judiciary, especially at the state level, they are not independent. And you know this maxim of you, who, you who pays the piper dictates the tune. Uh, that affects the judiciary at the state level. Even when uh, an executive order was signed by the former president to really grant them that financial autonomy, because that is what the governors use against them for the, the state judiciary and the state assembly. They went to court to challenge it, and they said uh, the issue of executive order is not legal. So, and that still empowers them. So when you look at, that's why I said, we know who the governors are. And Fubara is a governor today. That is why he has that energy to do those things. Remove the government of the governor from him. It's nobody in River State, nobody. But he is a governor now. And by virtue of that office, he is a powerful person. And that is why he's using the power against the minister. So for the judiciary, if we will have to do something about amending the constitution to grant them full autonomy in terms of ensuring that one, funding does not have to be determined by the governor. In terms of nomination into offices, we will not have the hand of the governors. You can't appoint somebody a judge and you will not uh, want to listen to you or you tell him you are interested in a particular case, or you say, okay, this is the judgment they should give, they would find a way to look for some technicalities to justify the position that has been dictated to them. And that is what we've been having. And when you now see that happening, especially when it now comes to uh, the matter of jurisdiction, who has jurisdiction over this particular matter, who does not have? And when they have coordinate jurisdiction, then you begin to hear one judgment in this particular court, Another one that is countering it coming from a distant court in a remote area. And both of them will be valid. But when they now say, the lawyers will now begin to say, the very first one that came out is the one that uh, some will hope, hold on to. Or the last one that is subsisting, that has not been vacated, that is the order that they must obey. So when you look at all this, that's why I said, when it comes to legal matter, I don't really like putting my hair, but we just speak to their mistakes and errors so that we can adjust. So that is where the problem lies. Those guys know that the pronouncement they made would land them in trouble. That's why they are now denying him, even going to vacate the initial court order they have gotten to uh, justify their position. So now erase the record that they never even had that in the first place because they know that their position has been threatened. What has been keeping them there is the fact that at the national level, they are having some backing. Ordinarily, they are well, supposed to have by elections for those seats, as we speak. And that's why uh, I agree with the first guest when he says they are using the tyranny of majority because they have the majority. Of course, you cannot have a, 21, uh, a 27 state assembly or uh, 31 uh, assembly uh, member assembly and you'll be having four. They don't even form quorum to be legislating on state matters, passing budget. That is an aberration of the highest order. But we are, <laughs> this is where we are Mr. now. Mr. Um, um let's focus a bit on the political structure, godfatherism, uh, wiki, has been pushing this for some reasons. And, you know, the genesis, like you mentioned, was Wiki backing for Barra to get into that position. Yeah. This, this being of godfatherism and political structures, what's, what's happening? It's, it's just, to some people, causing mayhem, uh, you know, for the successors. How do we address this? It is part and parcel of democracy. 
in Nigeria or everywhere? Globally. It is just that the way, the, the way we perceive it here is the problem. Now, let me explain myself for the sake of our listeners. Godfatherism has to rule. A godfather, rather, is a mentor, and a godfather can be a sponsor. Ideally. Yeah. You understand? Can raise funds for the candidates who uh, would need money to hold a particular office, so in like, respect of campaign, advertorials, logistics, and all those things. That's where the expenses of democracy uh, requires money. Two, having had experience in that office, if he's a former governor, he will need people like him for advice, guidance, and counseling on how to run the office, how to deal with stakeholders, traditional rulers, party men, uh, technocrats, and of course, those who are how to operate at the national level. So you cannot drop from the moon into a political office. You'll have to navigate your way through a channel. And most of the times, these channels are provided by mentors that we call Godfather. And all over the world, for instance, American election is in a few days' time. In the process of nomination for the Democrats, you see the likes of Obama speaking in support of Kamala Harris. To Kamala Harris, Obama is a godfather. Though they will not pronounce it that way, but that is the role that Obama is playing in the career or the ambition of Harris. And if Harris emerges, if she emerges, she will always consult Obama because he had been in the White House before her. And of course, he has experience to offer and advice to offer. On the other side, you see people like uh, 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 Robert Kennedy Jr. also supporting Donald Trump. Though, politically they are not the same, but he has more political experience. Donald Trump has been a businessman before he joined politics. But this guy you know, had political blood in him, having had an uncle who was a former president. So when you look at all these things, you find Godfatherism everywhere. It's just the way we have, the level at which we have taken it to in Nigeria is the problem. And that's why people do not understand that you cannot go into politics without whoever is introducing you to people around the community, whoever is moving, taking you around stakeholders to support you, whoever is mobilizing funds for you or sponsoring you solely, that is your Godfather. And of course, those people would have an influence. Yes, some may decide to, okay, what they have, what they want is good governance. What the only thing they want from you is to see you deliver and perform. Some will even help you by, okay, this is a blueprint. If you will implement this, that's what happens in Lagos. Any governor going has already documents to work with. He doesn't need to rack his brain. All he needs to do is to study each of them and look for how to, you know, in faces, because they've even put time lag, a time frame for each and every of them. And so that's why it seems that there's what? There is a progress in terms of political development and uh, uh, physical development in Lagos than any other state because of what? There's been consistency in pattern and of course the governors have not been except the one that tried to deviate and of course he saw what happened to him. That is what we should have as a nation and all the state of the federation should maybe try to learn some things from there. So Godfatherism is not something that is strange. If you are going into politics tomorrow, you will need some people to show you the way. Those are your godfathers. Okay. How much of a vested interest should we be getting from these godfathers and political structures? Because it looks like it's, it's a bane in the society because we have not addressed the real elephants in the room. Well, there's, <laughs> politics is all about vested interests. In fact, politicians will tell you there's no permanent friend or enemy in politics. What is permanent in politics is interest. And that's why you see them moving from one political party to the other, because they feel a political party to them is not ideological base, but is seen as a vehicle that will convey them to what their destination, which is the post they are high in. Okay. So that's uh, the thing. They always have vested interests. What you now need to do as an individual going into an office or mm -hmm. seeking an office 
is to look for people whose interests align with yours. Okay. Once there's a clash of interests, what is causing reverse crisis is a clash of interests. You understand? Initially, I'm sure Wiki would have thought that Fubara's interest aligns with his own. But when he got to office, his hidden interests begin to what, reveal, uh, reveal themselves, and there's a conflict there. And of course, the conflict is what has escalated to, uh, escalated to what we are having now. So what you need to do as a politician is to look for people whose interests align with yours. Some of us have been asked to come on board, but we look around, come on, we can't operate or exist in the means of these people, so still leave us alone. When we have people with common interests in the place, we will join those ones. So these are things that we are talking about, and that's one thing that is common or constant in politics. It is interest, and interest, too, goes with loyalty. When you, are, when you get there, in politics, there is no 99.9% .9 loyalty. It has to be 100%. That is the test that Fubara has failed as an individual because of the power that the office of governor has put upon him. Once there's a dent in your loyalty, then you have, you have problem. Because now, going forward, in his own ambition as a person, people will find it difficult to trust him. They will say he's a backstabber or a betrayer. You understand? And they will not, people that have strong stands against moves like that will not support the likes of Fubara in future. So is this a dent on his political future? It is. He may not see it now because he is a governor. They are usually blindfolded when they are in office. But he should learn from the likes of Abaseki who had done something similar in the past. You may have your way, but it is like winning a battle and losing a war. Hmm. You understand? The fact that you are winning this battle now doesn't mean you will win the war. And war, fair, most times is not physical combat. Sometimes it's a battle of strategy and tactics. You will even win the war without fighting. Sometimes in warfare, you know, it's a game of chess. Just know what to deploy at a particular time and what not to. Know when to retreat and when to advance. So these are things that he seems to be fading. And I, I look at him. Personally, now, this is my personal opinion. It's not worthy of followership of somebody like me. Because there are certain criteria you must have. When you are put to certain things, you must be able to demonstrate that, yes. And I know there are lots of people in Rivers. It's a state filled with helots who would have seen him as a weak person. But, Mr. Sumba, what if, I mean, he's, um, like you said, he's not being loyal. So what if... What if whatever he's doing right now is for the good of the people of the state? That I mean, would have things, been there things, there are things they will not come out to say, okay, these are the things Wiki is asking me to do, these are the things for Barra. But what if some of his um, policies, some of the things he's refusing to do, and some of the reasons why he's refusing to be loyal, to remain loyal to Wiki is because it feels like some of those things are or will be against the development of the state and against the will of the people. When you see a politician fighting his principles or his benefactors, and he's not telling us the reason for the fight, you should know that is a crook himself. Compared to Anoshi Omole, who will tell people openly that this is what they are saying, you know, and this is what I am doing. You understand what I'm saying? Go back to when Oshio Omole was governor, especially his first four years. That was what earned him the popularity he enjoyed in that state. And that was why he could sell his own uh, successor too. And that was his own mistake as well. Do you understand what I'm saying here? There are people who look out for these things. That Fubara is not, that majority of people around him are following him because of the money they will get from him. You understand? Not that they really, their loyalty to him is not, he has not, it's not, he has not demonstrated somebody, um, uh, the, 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 that worldliness for people's loyalty. And when you say about the people of Rivers, I've told you before, it is not about their, in fact, the Rivers people rejected PDP in the last election. They voted Labour. You understand? It's unfortunate that because of the structure that the party lacks, and that was why the Labour candidates, and of course, uh, they couldn't contend. Don't forget, if you go back to the governorship election in Rivers, it was more of a warfare the people could not really come out to express, uh, exercise their franchise, ideally. But in their hearts, they have rejected both the APC 
and the PDP. So if you have a PDP calling, sure, that's why they are not really concerned. All the people that have been talking, how many genuine people have come out to say they are protesting or holding a rally? It has always been politicians who are paid to do the job. So don't tell them, allow whatever you see on TV deceive you. So Go to Rivers, ask from the people there. They don't care. They just want to live their life and enjoy their peace. But within them, they have rejected both structures. So what are the gains and losses for Fubara for Umike and also for the people of the state? The people of the state have nothing to gain because they are not there because of their interest. But let's also not forget that... For Fubara, he has been governor, so he has achieved the same. He's gaining. Of course, whatever is a, a benefit accrued to that office is getting now, those are his gains. But his losses will be his political future because it's putting serious, causing serious damage to that political future. There are people who did not, who opposed openly, like us in Okpara. It's a governorship ambition. Who are now supporting him? Do you think those ones will not come out to contest against him in 2027? They will. And they may even be setting a lot of trap for him, which is falling into now, because we play politics of ethnic uh, ethnicity in Nigeria. His ethnic group in Rivers is minority. In fact, majority of his clan or his people are in Bayelsa state. That was why at, this, at a point in the crisis, delegate from Bayelsa came to meet with him, to appeal to him, and to you know, deliver a message that come. The job people are saying this thing you know, that you should do this. And that's why the likes of Baba Edwin Clark will be speaking all the way from Delta to wade into the crisis. You understand? They are just looking at uh, each from the ethnic angle. But how many job people are in rivers can go as a state? That's the thing. So these are issues that will affect his ambition. And the moment he begins to, the, the earlier he begins to reconcile, to see that politics is a game of numbers, you need to have the number. Incumbent governors have lost primary elections in this country, and nothing happened. And incumbent governors has lost general election in this country, and nothing happened. Mm. You understand? Oyetola will tell you the story. He lost now as a governor in Oshun State. Well, uh, Fayemi lost. He later came back, but he lost as a sitting governor. So when you are, look, it's not holding that office is not the end of the world. It doesn't mean that nobody can touch you. You are still touchable. You are still vulnerable. They will not tell you now. They will pray along, allow you to demonstrate all your weaknesses, and they now begin to use it against you. That is a mistake of Nosimis uh, Fubara is doing, which is making people like me to, like, ah, I wish I'm from River State, mm. or I have access to him, sir. <laughs> Your Excellency, you are making a very terrible mistake. You said reconcile the other time. Do you think that he still has a chance? I mean, some people feel he's, he's allowed this to fester on for too long, the food, and that, uh, you know, there's going to be problems for him. Uh, but then you mentioned reconcile. Is there a chance? There is. A, there's always a chance. I told you, the solution is political. If they don't stop all the court cases, if it does not align the two assemblies together, you will be on record as a governor that's ruled with four. We were criticizing Obaseki for governing with seven. But now he has added to the record governing with four. Tell me, I cannot present a budget to four members out of 31, I cannot do it, irrespective of whatever is happening. I can't as a person. But he has done that. And some people are supporting him because of what they will get. You understand what I'm saying? And these are not ordinary people of Rivers. They are also stakeholders with vested interests. So he's listening to the wrong set of people, and that is why he's having this problem. And that's why the thing is not going away. But you're not also not talking about those members defected from a political I've addressed that. That, yes, is, that is mean, their you, own mistake. Yeah, and they are trying to correct it. They are using the... I mean, of course, they would have waited for the assembly issue to sort itself out. You understand? But how long will it take for it to be solved? It's not supposed to even get to this level. You understand? Going to court and doing this in declare all those declarations were, wouldn't have taken place if the writing had been done had been issued. You understand? It's because of serial wrong steps that were taken. That is why we are still having the issue and it's escalating. And now we are so close to declaration of a state of emergency. 
That is an option at the federal level. How much longer do we have to get there? Well, we may get there. We may not get there. Mm. But if you're saying how much longer, it depends on uh, those who are affected. It depends on the position of the belligerents now, the two camps that were fighting. Well, I need to express my disappointment in the likes of Governor Ojili. He was in the best position to have solved this problem, but he took side. When you are uh, an elder statesman in that capacity, there are ways to do certain things. You know? Declaring that uh, somebody is the leader of the party it is not automatic that the governor should be the leader of the party. He himself should be the leader of the party in that state. That's without it. Yes. But when you, you know, maybe because of your personal or what you are getting, or you don't want to lose what you are getting, and you begin to just, I mean, then there's also this misconception. Some people will say, we K fought his predecessor. So that is why Nemesis is catching up on him. They are, not the, also they are not the same Precessor. scenario. When Amechi was governor, he defected to APC. In fact, like a year before the general election that produced Wiki. Wiki was a minister in the federal PDP government. It was the first lady then, Patience Jonathan. And this all the dealer we're talking about, those are the people that rallied around Wiki to produce his governorship, not Amechi. They've parted ways. So Amechi has no input in the emergence of Wiki as the governor. And throughout Wiki's eight years, he honored the Odili family. He never fought them openly or secretly. He was honoring them organizing state banquets in their honor. Even when the wife of the former governor retired, there was a state reception to that effect put together by Wiki as a governor. So he never fought his own benefactor. You understand? And he used his own influence to single-handedly produce the candidature and also support the uh, emergence of Fubara. So when we want to place it on the pedestal to balance, it is not the same scenario. So it's not applicable. You cannot say the way Obaseki has done to, <laughs> or she or Mole also single-handedly supported Obaseki and Obaseki 14. That is not the same way. Amechi did not support Wiki. So people should get that clear, and they should not match it together, because that is part of what some people were singing to the ears of the governor, and he has forgotten how Wiki hid him in government house when the FCC was looking all over for him. You understand? So when you look at all of that's why I said in, lo in politics, loyalty is very important. Right. Once there's a dent, it puts a question mark on your character. And as Fashion last said, when he was being screened for remains, I said, may your loyalty not be tested. His own loyalty has been put to test. <laughs>